Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Harrison, Director of Technical Services for Orkin Pest Control. In this three-part express podcast series brought to you by Orkin and AHE, you'll learn about integrated pest management, or IPM, and how it can be applied to healthcare environments. We'll walk through the practices and techniques that can help you prevent pests and the diseases they carry from affecting your patients, your staff, and your bottom line. Specifically, we'll cover an overview of IPM, the must-dos before considering a chemical application, and why documentation is so essential to effective pest management. So let's get started. Let's really understand what IPM is. Of course, it's integrated pest management, but it's a collaborative and ongoing cycle of three major areas. First of all, we have to assess what's going on. There needs to be a really solid inspection. Second of all, there's going to be an implementation of a program. A lot of different areas will get involved with that. But last of all, we need to monitor, we need to document, we need to know what's happening to see if our implementation has been successful and then what we're going to do in the future. So those three components really are the fundamental areas of a good IPM program. So basic IPM, first of all, starts with understanding the pest. And what we mean by that is what is the biology of the pest? Every pest can be a little bit different, but all pests will require four specific things. Food, water, shelter, and an optimal temperature for them to survive in. Controlling those pests will really be based upon four things. First of all, in general IPM, we think about using some type of biological method to help control the pest. Usually that's not very effective inside healthcare environments. Second of all then, are there mechanical methods that we can use to control that pest? And what we mean by that, traps. An air curtain would be a mechanical method or a door sweep. Third, are there cultural things that can impact the pest? What we mean by that, are there things that we're doing inside of that facility that could be changed? For instance, how are we taking care of the dumpster? Are we leaving the doors open? And then last of all would be a chemical application. I think it's important that we remember that that is the list that we approach things, always chemical being at the end. Now, what good is IPM? IPM is a more effective and efficient way of taking care of the pests. It also helps save money. Then since we're using less products, it's often more environmentally advantageous. Last of all, there are fewer health risks to non-target pests as well as humans as well. Let's go through and look at these things specifically. First of all, inspection is going to help us find out just what's going on there. A lot of times the pests will leave things behind. There can be droppings, there can be cast skins. Actually, there'll be gnaw marks if you've got rodents. Those are things that we would look for to help really understand what's going on and how bad that pest problem is. Now, sometimes pests only appear at certain times of the year. So understanding the historical data is really important. And you're going to be asked by your pest control professional to provide that. What time of year do you see ants? Or what time of year are ladybug beetles a problem? Or even if they are a problem? So that historical data is very important to putting a program in place. There are some other factors that are important as well. What does your building look like? And how old is the building? And was there add-ons associated with that building? The whole geography, is your building out in a swamp? What about the climate? In very cold climates, then pests might only be a problem at certain times. And also the soil type, whether it's a mulch soil or whether it's a, uh, a sandy soil, will all be important in being able to determine what pests might actually be there. Once we understand that, then we can put a program in place. This is going to be widespread. That program will involve exclusion, maintenance. Um, there's going to be some staff training associated with that. And ask your pest control professional about the staff training. Making few minor things might take care of the pest problem completely. Your pest control professional will recommend these things to you, and that's why communication is so important with your pest control professional. Last of all, then monitoring. This should be done by you or a designated person inside your facility, as well as the pest control professional. That consistent communication back and forth will be helpful because maybe their pests are all taken care of, or maybe there's an area that needs to be looked at. This documentation will there help in future, meaning what's going to happen next year and how we can prepare for that.